Hello, my name is Dr. Dmitry Tsvetov and I'm really happy to welcome you again on my YouTube channel. I know it's been a while since we have uh, posted any um, customized exciting content, but I'm really excited to share some uh, new information with you. Um, the topic of our today's presentation is going to be zygomatic and the pterygoid implants and how they can radically change and improve the treatment that we offer here in our office. Um, the zygomatic and the pterygoid implants are specialized dental implants um, designed to anchor into the zygoma, also known as the cheekbone, and the pterygoid region of the maxilla. Um, maxilla being the, the upper jaw and the pterygoid region of pterygoid plates being the area directly behind the maxilla. Um, these particular implants, uh, uh, pterygoid and the zygomatic implants, provide a very good and very useful uh, solution for patients with what we call atrophic, um, 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 with the atrophic upper jaws. These patients are either um, the patients who have been wearing a full, provision, a full upper prosthesis for a very long time, and as a result, uh, they ended up losing not only the teeth, but also the jawbone. Or it's also patients who uh, simply do not have the upper jawbone uh, of sufficient density or hardness to allow to um, to allow the anchorage of the traditional dental implants in a strong enough way that allows for the attachment of the teeth. Um, these particular implants, the zygomatic and the pterygoids, are used almost exclusively for patients uh, during the all on four or teeth in a day procedure. And the beauty of it is, is that they allow a fixed, non-removable dental bridge for patients who have been told in the past that they're not candidates for this particular procedure simply because they don't have enough bone. When we look at the traditional all-on-4 procedure, it's important to keep a couple of things in mind. As you can see on the, present, on the, on the picture on the screen, dental implants work by adhering or fusing themselves to the jawbone of the upper jaw and of course the lower jaw. But the limiting factor here is both the amount, also known as the volume, and the quality of the bone that the patient has. As I was mentioning previously, patients who've been wearing the dentures um, on the top jaw for a very long time begin to notice that over time the, the dentures are becoming looser and looser. And that is pretty typical. The reason behind it is that um, as the patient wears the, the denture, they, can, they continuously lose jawbone. And as they lose the jawbone, they lose the support for the upper full plate. Now, Eventually, it comes to the point where no matter how many relines they go through, no matter how much adhesive they place um, on the inside of the denture, the denture simply will not hold. And for these patients, that's pretty much the end of the road because there is no other solution for them other than um, uh, utilizing the pterygoid and the zygomatic implants to, to anchor into the bone that they still have. and than giving them fixed non-removable teeth. Um, when we look at, um, when we consider our traditional procedure, we always focus on um, how much bone the patient has and where the, where the bone is. Uh, we think of it in terms of the zones um, of the jawbone. So zone one, as you can see here, is the area between the canines. Zone two is the area um, of the premolars, and zone three is the area of the molars. Um, what, also, uh, what also affects the amount of the bone available is the sinus cavities, which are empty spaces on the side of the nose. And in a certain number of people, the sinus cavities can become quite large, especially after the teeth are removed. And therefore, again, that limits the amount of the jawbone available in zones two and zone three. 
uh, for those patients who still have um, enough jawbone in zone one, but do not have any um, useful um, jawbone volume in the posterior areas, the zygomatic implants that engage into the jawbones provide a very workable and a very reliable solutions that allows uh, the dental prosthesis to be anchored in the front as well as in the back and to provide a good functional support for the dental bridge all the way around the arch. The pterygoid implants take advantage of the, um, of the bone in the pterygoid region, which can be seen over here. So the pterygoid plates are located in this, in this area here, and they are inserted at an angle, just like the zygomatic implants are. But again, the beauty of this is that the pterygoid and the zygomatic jaw bones are very, very dense and very hard, and usually they're very plentiful in terms of the volume as well. Therefore, the, uh, they can be utilized as the anchorage points for the zygomatic and the pterygoid implants. So who exactly is a candidate for the zygomatic and the pterygoid implants? Well, it's, as I mentioned before, typically a patient who has been told in the past that they cannot have the all on four or teeth in a day procedure done at all because they don't have enough bone. And that may or may not be true. It may simply be that the doctor who did the consultation simply did not know that such a procedure exists or did not feel comfortable even offering the procedure to the patient um, or simply thought that the patient will not even accept uh, that particular treatment. Um, another, another potential candidate for the pterygoid and the zygomatic implant is pretty much any patient who wears an upper removable uh, full denture. Um, the patient may or, may or may not have enough of the bone for the traditional all on four, but even if the bone is present in terms of the volume, it's a big question mark as far as the density of the bone. Therefore, having the zygomatic and the pterygoid implants as the backup location for strong, uh, plentiful jawbone allows us to, again, utilize the pterygoid and the zygomatic implants for the anchorage of the, um, of the prosthesis. Um, uh, if the patient is not taking any uh, medication that affects the density of the bones, specifically the Fosamax, Alendronate, uh, Prolia, then they are candidates. Uh, those particular medications, uh, if the patient is on them, do change the metabolism um, of uh, the jawbone quite a bit, specifically the metabolism of the jawbone. So even though these medications are extremely useful and extremely helpful and often actually life-saving in terms of maintaining the patient's quality of life and preventing the hip and, uh, and the back fractures, they do have an unfortunate side effect of affecting how the dental implants heal, whether it's to the uh, jawbones or to the zygoma and the, and the, and the pterygoids. So if the patient is on those medications, unfortunately, they are not a candidate. Um, any patient who does not have contraindications to dental implant placements, specifically, for example, uncontrolled diabetes, which, which again affects the healing of the dental implants in a negative way, is also a candidate. And uh, last but not least, we also have to mention that patients who, for example, have had prior all in four or teeth in a day treatment, uh, which was done in a traditional way, but the implants have either not adhered to the jawbone properly or have uh, failed over time. These patients are very similar uh, to the traditional patient with an atrophic uh, maxilla meaning they don't have any jawbone left, in this case specifically due to the infection of those implants. Uh, but again, likely in this particular case, the, zy the zygomatic and the pterygoid implants can be used as a good um, um, kind of a rescue treatment, um, allowing us again to find good quality bone and be able to attach the prosthesis uh, to them, which is now non-removable. Let's look at some um, 
examples in just a minute, but I also wanted to show you on this model as far as what the zygomatic implants look. As you can see, um, the cheekbones are right over here and you can see those, those implants anchoring directly into the cheekbone. Um, that's the that's the apices of those implants and the prosthetic end of the implant comes out right over here um, right on the dental arch um, this allows us to engage the prosthetic uh, part of that implant to attach the to, uh, to attach the prosthesis when we look at the pterygoid implants uh, they're of course positioned a little bit in a in a different way you can see that they're actually attaching into the pterygoid plates over here and again the working end of that implant uh, comes out right on the alveolar crest over here so when we look at some examples that uh, we have recently done in the clinic we can see a patient with uh, periodontal disease or the gum disease and um, all of her teeth were pretty loose and she was not happy and she was looking for a more fixed solution unfortunately due to the periodontal or the gum disease she ended up in this situation where there was just not enough jawbone available for us to 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 anchor traditional dental implants so we opted for the zygomatic and the pterygoid implants which is what you can see here she still had enough enough of the bone in zone one to allow us to place uh, two implants there. Then we placed two zygomatic implants and then two pterygoid implants, giving her six implants all together on the upper jaw, which allowed us to give her teeth the, that same day. Um, and this is the end result and I think this came out pretty nice. Another patient can be seen over here she's uh, completely edentulous uh, but again her upper prosthesis was just not fitting very well and she was looking for a fixed solution and I'm glad we were able to help her and again it was in a very similar way to the prior case that you saw she had enough bone in zone one which allow us to place two implants in the front and then we used uh, the zygomatic implants and again the pterygoid implants anchoring into the pterygoid plates. And this is her end result. Um, and again, I think it's a very nice outcome. So I really hope that you enjoyed this presentation and hopefully um, it provided some useful information for you. And if you do have any questions or if you would like to um, to see if the, uh, the zygomatic and the pterygoid implants or any dental implants would be um, a useful procedure for you, please feel free to give us a call. Our number is 951-302-9100. The consultation is uh, completely free and we will be happy if we can assist you in any way. Thank you very much for your attention.